So hello and welcome to our today's webinar. Um, here at, uh, here with Augustens. I hope you can hear me well. Um, we want to show you today how you can integrate uh, ITSM with software delivery. Uh, and in, in detail, we want to show you how easy it is to integrate the ServiceNow application uh, with uh, PTC Inland Code Beamer. Um, that is what we have prepared for you today. So let's see what we have on the agenda. Um, first of all, short introduction. Uh, then we will talk about Symphony One uh, on, on two or three slides, and then we will go directly into the live demo with ServiceNow, which is uh, performed by my colleague Abdul Gulam, which is here on the line. My name is uh, Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Argosense and we'll the rest uh, of that webinar. Later on, uh, when we finish with that, we'll have a Q&A session. <clears throat> so feel free to put your questions already now in the F&A panel. Um, if there is anything, if there is our Q&A panel, if there is anything coming up, just write it down and then we will answer all the questions collectively at the end. So quick facts about ArgoSense. Our company was founded 2009, where we directly specialized in tool integration and data exchange with our core product, ArgoSense Symphony. In 2014, we launched a separate product uh, called ArgoSense Fidelia, uh, at that time for requirements management, but it has evolved in the past time, and now it's a platform for agile development and DevOps. In 2021, we launched um, an addition to Argus and Symphony called Argus and Symphony One, which is a uh, separate interface for Symphony um, with a little bit more um, built in capabilities with regards to customization. So, this is for the end user very much simplified. And this is what Abdul will show us today so that you can see how easy it really is in a few minutes setting up a complete project for integration. Lots of well-known companies are relying on ArgoSense. Here is an excerpt of our customer list. So if there is the need for you that you have a first-hand impression from one of our customers, just get in touch with us and we will connect you uh, with one of our customers. Usually they are very happy to talk to other prospects or, or users of, of our products. Yeah, Augustine Symphony One. What it is? What, what is it basically? So, what we are trying to do, or trying to help our customers with, is uh, providing a central platform where they can uh, integrate all their different domains within the application lifecycle. So, for example, starting with requirements management to test management to source code management. Um, all these different aspects where maybe customers have kind of a best of breed solution with different tools behind all these domains. We have the central platform where all the data uh, will be connected uh, uh, through the tools, so to say. So for that, we have about 35 plus integrations in different um, commercially available applications, as well as um, also where we have special um, part of the product, direct connection to so-called OEM supplier portals uh, within the automotive industry. So this is on the one hand side, uh, more the in-house use, so to say, where you can integrate all your different best of breed tools into a highly automated development environment. Um, especially with the focus on traceability and value stream management. So from product planning down to um, uh, service management, so to say. And this is especially the topic for today. And the second aspect of Argosin Symphony is call it B2B data flow management, where we can integrate your internal tools and uh, connect them to these um, already mentioned B2B portals um, provided by car manufacturers to their suppliers. 
So this is a very uh, interesting business here where we completely automate this data exchange, mainly based on defect management so that the clients here have uh, can work in their complete internal environment and do not have to care which system the OEMs are using here. So what uh, you will see in, in one or two minutes uh, from Abdul is on the one hand side, how easy it is. Again, no code implementation in a few minutes. Um, we have prepared within the product predefined synchronization rules, uh, which also support, for example, attachments, comments as a special um, artifact or kind of uh, attribute. Conflict handling is supported in different ways. Uh, we will see all that. Um, we are doing mapping uh, not only for attributes, but also for enumeration values, for example. Um, and there's also the possibility to extend that basic mapping, so to say, to more complex um, use cases here. What we will see is um, the dashboard you see it here in the background of the slide uh, with live status and statistics. So what has been run successfully? Have there been any errors or what else? And um, just mentioned uh, extended mapping here, that can be done with our customization option here. We call it extensions uh, for more complex um, integration scenarios. Yeah, so this is what we will see. And uh, now it's up to you, Abdul, to share your screen, please. Yes, so I will quickly show you uh, the screen of uh, Symphony 1. Just give me a second. <coughs> okay, so this is the Symphony 1 application itself. Uh, the Symphony 1 application, like I've said, allows us to integrate uh, different ALM tools uh, to transfer the data between each other. Uh, we have sort of uh, simplified the Symphony 1 architecture in such a way that everything works out of the box with a couple of clicks. So my goal here is to show you how um, uh, easy it is to, to set up a new synchronization uh, between two tools. In this case, it's uh, ServiceNow and CodeBeamer. Uh, the, on the left-hand side of the screen, there's the syncs. And there, by just simply clicking the new, we have a predefined synchronization process already installed on Symfony called the merge. And here we can give it a name. So let's say something like this, service now to code be my box. And then it gives us an option to select what is the source tool. So in this case, let's say a source tool is going to be um, uh, service now. And our target tool is going to be code Beamer. So with this, we can just say submit. And a new synchronization is now created <clears throat> between service now and code Beamer. <coughs> Now to uh, connect these uh, uh, systems, the, uh, the service now and Codebima, we have to go through the uh, uh, configuration steps, the icons that you see here. So the first step is to connect to service now, of course, which is going to be our source tool. So for this, we click on this icon here, and it takes us to the configuration of the service now uh, connection. So just give me a second. I'll just copy it from my other screen. So I'll copy the link, paste, and that's the link. And the same we will do for the password. And then you hit test connection, and then it validates whether the connection settings are correct or not. And then you can just simply say submit. And with that, we have connected uh, the Symphony application to ServiceNow. In a similar fashion, we have another plug button where we can plug ServiceNow to CodeBeamer. We follow the same uh, procedure here. We just copy the uh, URL. I'll 
quickly copy the password from my other screen. And then here you also give a test connection. And this should then connect to uh, the CodeBeamer application that's running on my machine. So the test connection was successful. And then as a consequence here, it gives us what are the projects that are there in CodeBeamer and what are the trackers that are then available in CodeBeamer. So we can choose what tracker item we want to uh, create and what project we want to create in. And then on hitting so submit, we are now um, configured the connection between the two uh, two tools and Symfony. The next step is the mapping. The mapping allows us to define the source field and the target field for the synchronization. So the loading of the service now fields will take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, I can just give you a quick work, uh, go through on what these uh, uh, UI elements mean. So we can choose the direction of the, the attribute mapping, whether it is going to be only to the source, only to the target, or do we want to synchronize this field bidirectionally? So that would be both. Then uh, we have an uh, option to select the source field, that is the source tool. In this case, it will be service now fields, and then we can select the target fields, which would be the code beamer fields then. So there we have the service now fields showing up. So for example, just uh, we can select one of the fields like here, short description, then we can say goes to summary, and then you'll see the target field, it tries to guess what could be the relevant uh, target fields. So Symfony knows based on the type of the source field, it tries to filter out the target fields and show you the right ones that you want to use. So let's say the short description in service now goes to summary in, uh, in CodeBeamer. And then here, the next option is the conflict. So when we are synchronizing an attribute in both directions, so that is in ServiceNow and CodeBeamer, if someone makes a change, we want to we want to write it uh, into either side of the uh, tools. So in that case, there can happen a, a, a scenario where both the fields are changed in both the tools. So in that case, we would end up in a conflict. And the conflict resolution mechanism in Symfony, it offers you three possibilities. Either you say here the service now will always win, or here by choosing target, you would mean code beam always wins, or you can just simply throw an error, uh, and then the error message will show up in the configuration, and then you can um, manually intervene and correct it. So in this case, I'll just select source wins and then submit. So that is all there is to it when selecting uh, the mapping so between <coughs> sorry between the two tools. So now we have the mapping set up and we have uh, the um, uh, the connections to the tools set up. So now what we could do is we can uh, simply try to uh, uh, run this uh, uh, synchronization. But one thing I think we have to do is also uh to both and then i think here we need the description so the description has to go into the description and then we'll say here again the source wins submit so at least the the description the short description so usually in service now most tools call it summary or title or something like that but in service now it's called short description so that's the way it is now we can go back and then to synchronize the item, we have a couple of options. So there is a nice scheduling option where we can then, if we activate it, we can schedule the process to run every minute um, at an exact time in a range between what time to what time and in steps of maybe let's say every minute or every five minutes or so on. So that's on the minute and similarly, you can do it also uh, per hour. And setting this up then would make the process to run in the background without any user intervention, and it will keep synchronizing the items back and forth. And Symfony is built in such a way that the inbuilt process always looks for the delta. So from the last synchronization, it looks what has changed since the last synchronization, and it only transfers those items into the target. 
I will not do a scheduling right now, so rather I will just manually run the sync. And for that, there is also a possibility. So in case if you want to synchronize something very urgently, you can come to the UI and simply click on the run button, and that would then also uh, trigger a synchronization in the in the in the background. So this is. Uh, this is uh, how uh, a setup of a synchronization between uh, CodeBeamer and Service, uh, sorry, ServiceNow and CodeBeamer works in Symfony. As you saw, the, the synchronization uh, setup itself was pretty straightforward. There was nothing much that we needed to do. So let me then uh, log into the respective tools so that we can see what is going on. So let's go into uh, service now. And on this side, we have the tracker. OK, so now uh, let's take a look at the service now. It's it's coming up slowly. So. Good. So these are uh, uh, the items. There are about uh, 100 items uh, in service now, and these are the items that are listed here. And now what we have done is we have taken the short description as the summary in CodeBeamer. So as a consequence, what you will see is in CodeBeamer, all these uh, uh, items are created here. So we'll do a quick refresh. So for example, here the test rendering of street names with special characters. So these kind of tickets now Sorry. So these are the tickets that have then showed up. So what we can do is um, uh, also synchronize the changes so we can go into one of the tickets and then for example change uh, the summary or the description and we will also see that in our um, uh, CodeBeamer application showing up. So let me go back to CodeBeamer. Let's wait for the synchronization to complete. So we can also see uh, the status of the synchronization sort of on the dashboard here uh, and we can see how many items were synchronized, how many items were failing. So this is also a nice metric. So if there are any failures, we also will see what kind of failures uh, were happening. So there's, uh, uh, yeah, so it says mandatory description field is missing. So it says that, OK, there are uh, some items which which the description is empty in service now. So therefore we see that in uh, code be more these tickets have not been created. So these these kind of uh, uh, follow up is also pretty nice. So you can see what exactly was the error that was going on and how to rectify uh, uh, these items. So we can go to those specific items. So for example, here it will tell us uh, which item was failing in the code beamer side. So it will tell it is the service now ticket and it will tell us which of the mandatory fields was missing. So from here we will be able to know which field is missing and then we can go and fill in that field. So for example, here the script in HTML, we can say test description. Uh, 
and then we can simply rerun the synchronization and that synchronization is going to uh, pick up from where it left off. So only those items that were uh, now uh, modified will then be uh, synchronized into uh, code Beamer. So this is the uh, this is the uh, basic synchronization between uh, ServiceNow and uh, code Beamer. So that's it from my side. If there are any questions or oh, Ralph. Yeah, maybe one remark from my side. So as you have provoked this error with that missing uh, with this missing attribute, um, mm -hmm. a mandatory attribute, um, we could also overcome that in the configuration. So maybe that's by purpose so that we then say, OK, if there is um, uh, an empty value and it's at and it's mandatory in the target tool, then we can, for example, also provide a default value, maybe no value provided or whatever yeah. in the configuration. Yeah. I think that is also very helpful. Yeah, so in the mapping, we have a possibility like this, like what Ralph said, so we can say to target and then we can say, say let's say, for example, uh, the description field and then we can then say uh, or uh, even uh, um, some any of those fields that are there. Uh, we can just select select one of the fields and then we can say the target value if nothing is assigned we can assign a specific value to it and then that way um, this field is never empty so something like default or something like this so in this way uh, if there are uh, cases where in the target you want to fill out these uh, mandatory fields but you don't have an equivalent source field then you can also do it in the mapping like this <clears throat> hey, so thank you very much, Abdul. So I think the same counts, uh, of, of course, for the backwards direction. So um, I think the interesting part also is uh, if a bug is uh, then fixed in uh, within um, CodeBeam or, or what else tool you you need uh, you use, and you want to give that information back to the service desk, so that's the, so that the support. I can give that information to his customer that the bug is fixed. Uh, that, of course, will be uh, also synchronized automatically, as we have seen that um, the sync was configured in both directions. So, um, for maybe you want to, uh, you can then in the description, or maybe you have a resolution, um, a resolution attribute where you can uh, fill in this information, or maybe also via synchronization of a status. Um, enumeration or whatever, so there are different options possible how to customize this um, or to configure this integration. Um, in the meantime, I should have also back to my slides. So what we have uh, seen now is just for a recap, a short recap before you go into before we go into the FNA uh, Q and A session, um, we have two people working on the different uh, systems. Um, support engineer raises the change request in in service now, um, in, and uh, we have then created a bug op object or item in CodeBeamer. Developer works in CodeBeamer, so this is what we um, just assume, and then. Um, when the bug is fixed, we can update that change request as, um, as just explained, um, completely automated. So what is the advantage of that? Of course, the directional integration and information exchange, very important that the people working in their environment, so the service now support people, they do not have to change in CodeBeamer or Jira or whatever is used in development um, to see the status of their their tickets of their change requests and, and same at the same time the development guys they don't need to look into service now they get all the information directly put into uh, their application into code beamer so no copy and paste no emails no chats necessary even if they want to communicate if there are questions back they can use comment fields for example so they can comment on the items uh, in both directions so everything is captured 
within the pool and so to, so it's at all times it's um it's reliable information it's within your life cycle workflow um and nothing is outside um, so to say which is very often uh, very uh, important and sometimes um de depending on the on the vertical you're in and the branch you're in it's 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 a, it's a requirement that all information exchange um, is really captured. As you have seen, point and click configuration, there's no programming programming necessary. Just need to know the credentials for the targets or for the systems, and there you go. Okay, so let's see what we have. Um, one question I already opened so but this then we have already seen <clears throat> with um with the fails or retries um there's a second one should be here as well no. um there was a following follow-up question on that um so just read it is it possible to configure the tool to aggregate the errors in sync and then send them to either to the source or to the target to a defined field in for such reports. I think that but Abdul, you should uh, um, help me on that. It's probably possible with the extensions, but what we can do uh, maybe even more um, streamlined is we have also connection to, um, to Microsoft Teams. So there we can, for example, use, um, uh, use a certain channel uh, in the Teams application where this information uh this information can be can be published and uh can be used by the respective uh, bodies so exactly. in that case yeah. that would even have the advantage that for example if 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 different teams from different um from different uh, um, departments may be working uh, in, in teams, they can see both the information that something um, has not been transferred correctly and can also work on that and maybe um, communicate on that and then find a solution for that. Um, second one, or next one, here's a question. Does the service now adapter um, support only Symfony 1? So as I explained we have also Symfony Classic application. This is which is uh, which is a little bit more customizable. Um, currently, um, it's only for Symfony One. Um, I think it's not planned for Symfony Classic. If that is the case, that one of our customers has the need of having that uh, tool supported also with Classic. I highly recommend um, to create a support request and then we we will, we will uh, continue on that. But currently it's not the case. So another one regarding security, very, very um, high level question regarding security. How is your tool and connection Secured. Um, Abdul, maybe you can you can answer on that. Uh, yes. So the connection. Sorry, Symphony itself talks to the uh, uh, tools via uh, if the tools are. Uh, listening in HTTPS, then communication between the Symfony application and the respective tools will happen via HTTPS and it will be encrypted. Similarly, if a user wants to interact with Symfony, uh, we can also uh, uh, configure Symfony to run uh, in HTTPS. So you can uh, be, uh, generate a certificate from your company and then uh, put that com uh, certificate into the uh, Symfony web application and then the Symfony application will also listen in HTTPS. So that's what that's the layer of uh, uh, um, uh, security, let's say, and then uh, the passwords uh, for connecting to the respective tools. They are encrypted and they are stored in the database of Symfony, so not everyone will have access to it. 
and uh, similarly no one will be able to trigger an external synchronization into symphony from outside unless they have the proper credentials to do it yeah so there are these layers of security hope this answers the question yeah yes if not just extend your question if you have um, if you want to have a, a few on a, on a special topic regarding security um next question um is it um, preferable for symphony to be installed on the machine uh, where the target or the source application um, is um, already uh, already installed for maybe faster transfer um, so usually we always recommend to use a separate machine for uh, in symphony um, i think the simple reason is um, if you install an additional application uh, on on a server already um, an application like ServiceNow or Jira, whatever is installed, I think um, this may have performance impact on that machine in general. So, um, and then if there is, if there is anything uh, um, getting problematic, then I think it's hard to see uh, which, which one is causing the problems. And also if you, if you're running large synchronizations with thousands of items uh, in, in one run, I think it's also better in terms of scalability to have a separate machine for uh, for our application. So usually, and usually most of our customers, they do not have only two tools. Uh, they are synchronizing data. Maybe they have, they have, we have customers, they have 10 or more. So there, I think it would not make sense to have the Symfony application on one of the systems where already a tool is installed. So there we, clearly recommend a dedicated server for that. Um, OK, so there's an addition to the security question. Um, can arrest calls be some uh, how be encrypted? I think that is what we what Abdul already answered. So the complete communication chain, so to say, um, is encrypted. Um, regardless of, uh, of what technology is uh, is underlying, so I think yes, of course. Yeah. Yep. So the, the 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 calls to Symphony also. So uh, if, if that we can make some REST calls to Symphony, and if Symphony, uh, uh, if you configure Symphony to to have a certificate in the background, either generated by you or from an external CA, then yes, all communications will be over HTTPS then. Okay, just waiting, nothing coming in also in the meantime. Um, just one, before we close, uh, one um, remark from my side, as you can see here now on the slide, so we have been recording this webinar, so uh, you can watch the or rewatch the webinar at any time using the link you already have um, received from us. You can also forward this to other colleagues or whoever you want so that they can watch the recording. Um, if you have any questions regarding our products, um, just visit our, um, our website, uh, go to the contact form or uh, send us an email at mail at argosense.com and we will care about your, your request. Um, so one more question. I think we take that before we close. I think that's... Uh, Asked very often, um, does Symfony require an elevated privileged user in each of the tools uh, to be able to pull and push the data? Um, usually, uh, our customers they have dedicated kind of system user, however you want to call it, um, not really the user of a person uh, who is um, of an admin or whatever. So let's let's use uh, system users. Um, to connect with the systems, uh, we have seen um, in, in um, Abdul's presentation how to authenticate, and so there we uh, um, absolutely say that that should be a system user. And the privileges you give to these users, this is depending uh, on the extent of data you wanna you wanna allow to see for this privileged user. So you have the complete control, which system user can see what in, in each of the systems. 
Uh, so we really do not care, so to say, about any privileges. So that will be done in the respective tool and Symfony just sees what this user we are connecting to can, can see. And only this data can be synchronized. Okay, so again, thank you very much um, for your time. Um, we would love to see you in other uh, webinars. So we have next next week, um, I think, uh, same time, same day, a webinar for our um, DevOps and HR development platform, Argosense Fidelia, um, which is very, very interesting. Just can recommend to watch that as well, yeah, if you have interest uh, in these topics. And so, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, nice weekend already now and hope to see you soon again. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.